Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. A lot of the guys won't go political, right? Um, and I, I try to avoid it. I try to keep politics off my channel. I just want people to have fun and talk about firearms. And I want to show the responsible use of firearms because, um, you know, it, I, I think that helps our community as a whole. But when times like this happen, you know, I feel the need to go political. I need to use the voice that I've been blessed with um, to, to try to stop legislation that would strip us of our freedom. And, it, and it's just sad that we always, every time there's a tragedy, it's sad that we have to go, oh my gosh, this tragedy is terrible. But then our minds immediately go to, oh man, here comes more gun control. Yeah, but I don't, I don't understand how you oh, separate. Yeah, you have people standing in front of a, a, a monitor calling for gun control. Right. You know? I mean, but how do you separate it here? Right. Because it's just like I'm, I'm, I'm heavily into cars as well. Right. Um, matter of fact, in about I think in about two weeks or something, I'm going to see Michelle in Vegas. So um, I'll probably be able to tell you guys what kind of security and all that these hotels have put into place. Yeah. I, since I, go ahead and finish your thought. Then. Well, what I was going to say is, you know, I'm into cars and all that. But it's like you were saying, you know, the, the analogy that you brought up about someone, you know, using a very powerful car. We still I still don't want anyone to regulate those because I like them. So if, if people think that they can really separate all these things, we're going to have regulations of all this stuff. We already have even with cars. We've got regulations that are going to come in. And this yeah. thing that gives us like what the hell are we living on this planet for? You know, as we're human beings, if they take we're, everything. We're supposed huh? to be the land of the free and the home of the brave, you know. And I, and I see a, a bunch of cowardice in a lot of people, and I certainly don't see freedom. I've traveled to countries in Europe that have better gun laws than we have. Yeah. You know what? And, and that's what I think. I think it is. They do want us to be mindless drones. They want us to be slaves. I know that, you know, lots of people get caught up in this whole thing and they think that it's only like, uh, you know, black people or Africans that have been slaves. Everyone on the planet, every race has been a slave at some point. And right oh, now at this moment. Yeah, and right now at this moment, there are people who are slaves, like in the literal sense of the word, but they want us all to be to be mental slaves. And how, how are you going to live in a world where all you do is you're just part of the machinery, you're just a cog, and you can't right. enjoy or have, you know, have anything that, that brings you kind of some kind of pleasure, enjoyment, you're able to unwind, because some person decides to take that thing and, and use it to be destructive, whether it's flying a plane, driving a car, riding motorcycles, you know, or, or shooting guns or, or anything or like that. Yeah. And that's, and I always like to liken this, this whole argument about gun control to prohibition. How well did prohibition work out for us, folks? It, it didn't last long. And there's a reason why, because prohibition get, made an even bigger problem when they banned alcohol in the United States, which again, is amazing to me that they did that. I can't believe they did that because that was just after the turn of the century, man. And, and America was still a young country and we were so prideful about our freedom, but they banned the, the production and sale and consumption of alcohol. But when they did that, they gave rise to crime, organized crime. Right. It's because of prohibition that we had the mob come about, the mafia. And to this day, we still deal with the ramifications of prohibition. They, they quickly undid it and, and made it legal again. But they didn't learn their lesson. I mean, mo none of us have learned our lesson because that happened before any of us were born, or most of us. Uh -oh. But, you know, it, it's. <laughs> There's some vampires out there. there that, that, yeah. But, but yeah. <laughs> I don't know if they're watching YouTube or not. But, but um, yeah, I mean, they, they're, we're headed right down that path again, man. They're going to try prohibition. And you think it was mm -hmm. bad with, with alcohol? Try prohibiting firearms. Try banning firearms and see what mm -hmm. happens. Yeah. Uh, but that, 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 3% that simply will not stand for it will make a mess of things. And I really don't want to see that happen. I don't want to see a civil war. I don't want to see us fighting literally with our government. I want to affect change through the political system that's in place. And I still do believe that we can do that. I think we're doing that right now. I mean, the fact that we can get in front of a camera, post a video to YouTube, and I, <laughs> I swear I, I'm going to have a hit taken out on me by some people in Congress because I'm having fans uh, email me saying, dude, I just called Carlos Cabello's uh, office and, and they like just hung up on me. <laughs> I know so I... the phone calls and, just, and, and now you just get voicemail like in their D.C. office are not even taking your calls. Yeah, yet. well, we switch, switch to their social media. Calls. That's what I say. Like, like the thing I would say about that, I posted those guys because you can find their social media. Easily. Yeah, that's why I implored everybody to post it. I wanted everybody to make a video and everybody to post it because. Yeah. 
that it, 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 it was us collectively doing that, that we could organize that fast and make yeah. videos and make posts and, and everybody could, you know, come together that fast through social media. And then we were blowing up their phone lines. And believe me, that scares them more than anything. And I want to speak about this too really quick because this is really important. Right now there's this petition going around and everybody signed a petition to stop the, uh, the, the bump fire stock bans. Guys, those petitions we found out are absolutely 100% worthless and a waste of time and energy. We had well more than the, the required 100,000 signatures yeah. to stop the Hughes Amendment, and yet we never got a response from the White House. So that is just something to keep you complacent, and it makes me angry when people are saying, hey, here's the link to the petition. Go sign it. And then people go sign it, and they think that's all they have to do. I signed the petition, so I did my job. No. So those petitions are a complete waste of time. Stop spreading the link. Yeah. You know what? This is – yeah. Get on the phone and call your congressman. Call them. That's your first action. Call them because they, their phone's ringing off the hook, makes them mad and, and, and makes them listen. Then you go to email and faxes. Blow their, if you get their fax number, send them endless faxes saying, I oppose this legislation. You know, yeah. If you have um, a fax machine. I think right. this is a good thing to talk about. Um, and Lola wants us to cover like petitions. I, I think Lola wants us to cover what we can do. And I agree with what you're saying about um, this thing, but it's tough. Like if you tell your fans, you know, they're sharing it and for you to go, hey, that's totally useless. It's almost like trying to explain to people that when you go to a traffic light and there's a crosswalk you want to cross and there's that little button that you could press. <laughs> yeah. People think if you press that button, it changes the traffic lights. It doesn't do shit. <laughs> That's to pacify you. If it has a function, it serves yeah. to pacify you. In most cases, I, someone might have told you that it does something somewhere, and that may be true in like 1% of the cases. 99% yeah. of the time, that's just to pacify you while you're standing there. And yeah. and I think I agree with you that a lot of things like that are the same thing. It just pacifies you. They maybe know who you are and have some kind of database, and that's all well and good. But these people really need to hear from you. And if they shut down yep. their phones, you can uh, email them. You can they, they have social media and they're vain, just like the rest of us. So you can get on their social media and blast them. I put up a post last night and I listed their social media and I tagged them. And when yes. you see other people do it, repost what some other – like if you don't have the time to make up a social media post, repost what other people are doing. Please do. Yeah, get everybody motivated. And, and here's what we face right now. So – under the Obama administration, everybody was scared of Obama, right? They mm -hmm. were scared that he would sign any gun control bill that actually made it to the House of the Senate and wound up on his desk. But they're not afraid of Trump. And that's what scares me. Yeah. I've heard more people of the gun say, ah, even if they pass it through the, the House and the Senate, Trump won't sign it. Oh, my God. Really? <laughs> I mean, did you really just say that? Yeah. Really that naive. I think it's fun. I was like, what the hell just happened to you? I know, I remember on the computer. I'm like, oh my God, I was trying to do face palm. And, uh -huh. and it's like, people, if it makes it to his desk, we're screwed because Trump is a businessman. Trump is a negotiator. He prides himself on that fact. If he thinks he can take it, what seems to be and what has been sold as a harmless bump fire stock bill, which is actually a sweeping gun ban. And, fire, and, and sign this harmless bill to get Obamacare repealed or to get the tax reform he's looking for, he'll sign it in a frickin' heartbeat. Abs I, think he would. I think he will. If you look at what's been going on, like why did he crack in that moment that we had this thing go down and the media was putting pressure on him? Because the media has been putting pressure on him this whole time. It's the reverse of what happened to Obama. When Obama was president, the media would hide shit that he did wrong. And in, in this case with Trump, I mean, you know, I mean, this is the truth of what's going on. They're yeah. engineering shit that he's doing wrong and everything that he does, they're amplifying it and putting tremendous amount of pressure on him. You know, and this is a person who's lived a lot of his life in the public light. So this means something to him. You know, that's why he cracked and opened the door. And then obviously I, I want to talk about like what happened with the NRA. I'm not trying to skip over that. So if you think he's gotten no wins, you know, at least Obama got Obamacare. Right. And, and, he, and Trump's trying to do something about it to the point that today he had to go sign executive orders that we all think like, what the hell is up with these executive orders? Now he's signing executive orders. Of course, the media thinks it's terrible when they thought it was great with Trump, but he's under that kind of pressure where he can't win. And he's the president and Republicans have the House and they have the Senate and, and they could pass a law tomorrow. They could pass any laws they want to tomorrow. They can get rid of Obamacare. They can roll back all this freaking gun control. They can do absolutely. anything and they won't do it. 
That's what's that's what's scary. First of all, I also want to say that I actually support Trump simply because he was the best of the two choices we had by far. And I want to see him be successful. But I can't put my trust blindly in anybody's hands when it reaches the point where one person now gets to decide there's a 50 50 chance they'll decide against what you believe. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want that bill to make it to his desk. We got to no. stop it. It, it can happen. There's, there's, there's absolutely gun guys that I've talked to, that I've spoken to, died in the wool gun guys that are telling me over and over again, oh, there's, there's no way. Like everyone always says there's going to be gun control. Never. Ha-. Well, first of all, there, there's already it been a lot of gun control. People. <laughs> I remember standing at the gun counter and people going, oh, that'll never happen. They'll never. What the hell? How'd that happen? No shit. Yeah. I don't even cuss. And I'm trying like not yeah. to cuss. We are our own worst enemy because apathy kills us. And that gets back to my point, thinking that Trump is going to save us. We don't want to get it to the point where we have to rely on him saving us. we got to get motivated. People are just going to sit around on their butts going, oh, well, it'll never pass. And even if it does, Trump will, Trump will do something. No, but that's not true. Organize. Get in front of your state capitals like we did post Sandy Hook, carrying a freaking rifle and saying, not one more inch. We're done. You vote for this. We're dragging you out in tar and feather. Well, I mean, just just to give people like real world stuff that they can look at. Paul Ryan, like this thing happened in Vegas. Nancy Pelosi came out and, and associated suppressors with this, which was total bullshit. Right. Um, there's, if this guy had a suppressor, we were still going to hear him shooting. Right. But she said, imagine what would have happened. And Paul oh, Ryan yeah, yeah. took um, took the share act off the table. Oh, yeah. Right? Well, that was, so, that was totally calculated on her part because, you know, the, 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 the anti-gunners have been fighting the SHARE Act, which was a very good piece of legislation. They were fighting it the, the whole time. And as soon as this tragedy happened, Clinton got right in front of the camera and said, if he would have had a silencer, they never would have heard the gunfire. Woman, you've never been shot at. I, I want to put a camera down range. Th- thank you for reminding me of this. I want to put a camera down range at 100 yards and I'm going to shoot at it with a high power rifle. And I want you to hear what it sounds like when a bullet goes by. You most yeah. certainly can hear you being shot at. Yes. It's suppressed. And a suppressor doesn't completely silence the report of a rifle. They would have known there. That would have made no difference. And she probably knows that. Or maybe she doesn't. Maybe she's just that stupid because she doesn't know anything about guns. But that's just it. The anti-gunners all, never let a good tragedy go to waste. They but also they, but, step on the dead bodies and, and say, look at me, look at me, look at me. We need to ban everything under the sun. Look at this dead body. Right. But 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 here's the thing that should be scary to people who think that nothing's going to happen. That gave Paul Ryan cover to pull that off the table. I don't think he wanted to cover. He had to pull it because of pressure. I, I don't I mean, Paul Ryan, to his credit, I mean, the guy screws up endlessly and I'm not a big fan of Paul Ryan. But but he has said that as of right now, at least with H.R. three, nine, 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 I don't know how many four nines. Uh, the, the bump fire stock bill, he's not going to allow it to the floor for a vote. It may go through the Senate, but presumably they'll kill the House. We can't trust that either, right? No, because no, these guys can make deals, man, in the middle of the exactly. night and when we're sleeping. Obamacare us. Yeah, know. exactly. There's some, like, we, we could be, like, people who don't, I, I, I don't understand, like, maybe people haven't been watching this. I've been living in America for 30 years. O- overnight, these guys will get together, make a deal, and it will wind up on the president's desk, and there will be people in the White House Remember, you know, the Republicans have stopped any reform of, of of Obamacare. That's why Trump had to sign executive orders, right? And then who did he have in the White House? He had Democrats. So they they will they will get something passed through somehow. It will get on his desk. People will go over there and go, look, we'll pull the media. The media will back off for a couple of months. We're gonna give you a win. You know, maybe they'll offer him a win on something like tax reform or or um, Obamacare that they don't really give a shit about because in the end, they're going to put stuff in the bill. Like Pelosi said, you got to pass the bill to see what's in it. And then he's going to go for that. If you don't believe he's going to go for that and get a win, he's already president. It doesn't matter if he gets a second term. He's already president. He's very wealthy and he'll be better off in Trump Tower. And and, and once he signs that bill, if it makes it to his desk, game over. The fight to repeal that, it'd be 10 times worse. It'll never happen. You'll Stop. never repeal it. Right. Once he, once that bill makes it into law, we're done. And we, we can't let it happen. That's why we got to motivate people. we yeah. got to get them out of the apathetic stages and get them into the motivated stages because the threat is extremely real, people. So there's no saving grace. If you sit on your butts and you do nothing, when everything that you love gets taken away, I don't want to hear, I don't know how this happened. I elected a Republican. 
No, you elected a turncoat. We have to fight. Liberty is not free, people. You have to fight for it because anybody in a position of power is your enemy. I have a very adversarial relationship with my government. I don't trust it as far as I can throw it. I love my country. I freaking hate my government. And it's my government that we're at odds. And this is a concept that people in Europe Europe don't understand. I try to explain to them. They, they don't understand the Americans' way of thinking. They don't understand that we have an adversarial relationship with our government. They don't understand that we don't trust them. That's why we have a Second Amendment. Because when they stop serving the people, it is our obligation, obligation to remove them from power. Yeah. That's why we have a Second Amendment. It's not about hunting. It's not about sporting purposes. It's a very real reason that thing's there. And yeah. that's because but, when we lose our voice to speak, which is the First Amendment, when they take away our ability to speak and we no longer have a voice in government, step two. Yeah.